Not everybody in the world has electricity, you know. Lots of people in other countries, and also in many Spanish-speaking countries, don't have electricity at all, at least in parts of the countries, or they have it for part of the day, but not all day long. They may have to take baths at a certain part of the day when they can heat up the water, or they may have to do their cooking while the electricity is available during, oh, several hours of the day. As you go through this two-part series, let's see how you feel about the grandson and the grandpa that I interview. Notice the difference between their needs for electricity. And be patient as I show you something interesting about words. I want to take my time and make it hard for you to forget. I'm making ice today. I'll put this polvo, polvo de cereza, in here. And then the directions say that we need to boil dos tazas de agua. I've already got una taza de agua in the olla. And then into the olla I pour otra taza de agua. We're going to let that boil. Strange, huh? We're going to make ice by boiling this agua. Are you bored now? Are you doing uh, anything during the day? No, besides sleeping, that's all I have. <laughs> Catch up. Too <laughs> <laughs> Bueno, el agua is boiling. Está muy caliente. Remember, tengo frío, tengo calor. Caliente, cal, calor. Caliente, cal. <laughs> Are you a TV watcher, video game player? Uh... Basically about equal. Yeah, okay. So, so, so you, I mean, electricity does change things. More for you than for your grandpa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Are you bored, sir? No. And pour el agua caliente in here and all that cherry powder turns the agua roja. Did but, you have uh, electricity when you were a kid? No, we didn't. Fast for electricity come through this part of the country. This is going to make some great ice. We just have to be patient. Now the directions say I'm supposed to add two cups of cold water. Well, that'll put us in the right direction if we're making ice. We're going down I-65 in Indiana, headed south toward Kentucky. You see on the map here, we're coming up to this place right here, the river. It's called the Ohio River. Una taza de agua fría. So we're going to cross a pretty good sized puente in just a little bit. And that will take us out of the state of Indiana and into El Estado. Kentucky. Otra taza de agua fría. Remember, tengo frío. Agua fría. Dos tazas de agua fría. So we put in dos tazas de agua caliente y dos tazas de agua fría. Now we'll put this in the nevera or refrigerador to cool it down a little while. Then we'll add something to our ice. We're going down to take some footage and pictures of the aftermath of the big ice storm down here. Kentucky, most of the state of Kentucky was hit very hard by a major ice storm and many, 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 many thousands of homes and businesses have been without electricity. You don't think about that most times of the year. 
until it happens. And if you're out of power for even an hour, you might start panicking. But in places where they aren't used to having it, they don't have all kinds of things that need it. Sometimes people don't even, don't even have light bulbs. And a hundred years ago, a lot of people in this country still didn't have it. But they learned to live happy and successfully without the electricity. Here's some more ice. Here's some more ice. Mmm. Mmm. Huele muy bien. This is ice. See? Here's some more ice. So let's see what happens when Mother Nature strikes a mighty blow with ice. We're not going to see much ice. <laughs> Strange look. So we're coming into Litchfield finally on the Western Kentucky Parkway. All along the way, we've been seeing trees that have been knocked down. This, all this is perfect. Keep going with them. Arboles por todas partes. Look at the arbol up there. Some of the some of the ramas on top of this wire. More than one power line up there. Well, that's why we're kind of scoping it out right now, right? I'm going to take este cuchillo pequeño and let these slices fall in. Mm. Otra rebanadita. Rebanada. Another slice. Rebanada. Let's just put the whole banana in there. In some places these are called platanos. Usually I don't use the word banana in Spanish. I use the word platano. But in some places they would say, that's not a platano, that's a banana. But they wouldn't really care if I said it. But they would if I was making something that needed platanos or, I mean, uh, plantains. All right, there we go. We've just put, cut up a banana and put all those rebanaditas in our ice. Our cherry-flavored ice. Hmm. I waited a little bit too long to put it in the ice. Now the ice won't let it go down. That's how we know it's ice.